the Kita. Mountain Musa was famous for a huge trip he took to Mecca. Guys, Mecca is known as the holy city for Muslims. Mansa Musa decided on his trip in 3024. Guys, Mansa Musa was so rich that he brought so many people with him on his trip. How many people do you think he bought, Raya? I think there was a hundred. A hundred people? Yeah. Is she right, guys? Mansa Musa bought 60,000 people on his pilgrimage. <gasps> Imagine he had a carriage of 60,000 people. Say what? Wow. That is a law! So He's your man, make you know, go kill yourself. When you go make them now, only got go no. You they try, you they try, make you know, go lose yourself. No go stress yourself, cause no be you get yourself. Oh, Lord, say now you go forgive me, peace. Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of Nice Corner. Hope you guys are wonderful and you are blessed and you all know what to do. Do not forget to hit that subscribe button and that bell notification so you can keep up with everything in Nice Corner. And also give this video a huge thumbs up. Doesn't cost you guys anything. And also please visit my PayPal account. So today I am here with a wonderful brother from the diaspora who's going to share with us his experiences being here in Ghana and also the wonderful project that he has taken on. So you guys, please help me welcome Jerry Johnson. Hi, Jerry. Hello. Hi, how are you? Everything's good. How is it? How is it? <laughs> Everything's wonderful on my end. Right, right, and thank right. you so much for being on my channel and taking out the time today. No problem. <laughs> so to start <clears throat> off with, um, so where are you from? I came here from California. I've spent most of my life around okay, Los Cali Angeles. Okay, in the house. <laughs> around Los Angeles. Yeah, I'm finding more and more people mm -hmm. from L.A. area yeah, yeah. out here than, than you would believe. There's a actually. lot. A lot of people come from I Southern realize. California. Yeah, sure. So how long have you been here in Ghana? Well, I was thinking 2003. That's 17 going on 18 years. Yeah. Wow, that's so a I've long time. I've been here for time. a minute. Yeah, that's that's a real long time. Is Ghana the only country you've been to on the continent? Oh, no, no. I spent a lot of time. All I've been just about every West African country. I haven't spent much time. I haven't spent really? any time south or east, but uh -huh. I know West Africa very well. Senegal, mm -hmm. uh, Burkina, mm -hmm. Ivory Coast, Guinea, all of these places. Yeah. Wow. But I settled in Ghana mm -hmm. mainly because of the language uh, mm -hmm. and really because I thought a lot of people, a lot more people would be visiting me, you know. Oh, I brought so you know. my mother here, my father here, brother, sister. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking more it would be easier to, to get people to come here mm -hmm. is at least their first trip. Because you come yeah. to Senegal, you have to speak a little French to know what's going on, this kind of thing. So there was no real, you know, I hate to say it, there was mm -hmm. no real, like, driving reason oh, no, of yeah. Ghana. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's kind of how I chose it. And from my standpoint, it was a, just get on the continent somewhere. Mm -hmm and start to organize it yourself, organize myself. I would say the West African, you know, I would say like um, area mm -hmm. here on this continent has a lot of um, historical significance. And I have to yes. say, moving here, one of the first things we went to was the slave dungeons. Mm -hmm. And I would have to say, I would never forget that experience. Right. I mean, experiencing that at my young age, right. I felt really honored and privileged, right. you know, to step the grounds that my ancestors are doing the brutal treatment that they went through and I was that's an experience that I will never forget and that is leading me to the wonderful um, project that you have here words cannot express how amazing it is you know mm -hmm. with your project could you please share with us what you have here yeah well this is the uh, African ancestral wall yes. and um, you know, it's a little bit ironic that it's kind of getting in a mm -hmm. tourist type of circuit, which is mm -hmm. fine, because it never crossed my mind when we started this. Mm -hmm. And I spent a lot of time in a lot of schools in, in the area, and um, there's almost no African history. I mean, you mm -hmm. have to know about the Romans and what they wore and what, 
battle formation they had and what's at the bottom of their shoes. Right. Everything, <laughs> all, all this gory detail. The whole bit. You need to know about these queens <laughs> yes. and kings and Louis the 15th mm -hmm. and 18th and Elizabeth. Uh -huh. Just all of this busyness, craziness yeah. of all of this European history to be considered a good student. Exactly. Meanwhile, you don't know anything about African history, even Ghanaian mm -hmm. history. And so after so many schools, so much time, it can't, and then when you go to the schools, it's very difficult to manage sometimes because they're open, they're loud, right. so much is going on. Mm. And like I said, getting and coming from there, God knows what the roads may be like. Yeah, exactly. So after some, a few years of that, I said, you mm. know, I have a better idea. I have the land. Mm. I've been here for quite a while. So I turned this one wall that I had, plastered mm -hmm. it, painted it into the African ancestral wall. Mm -hmm. And now I have 92 large portraits of Africans wow, in history. 92. And that way I could bring the children for field trips. So that was the... Oh, so you can that have was field the, trips here. Oh, yeah. I mean, free field trips. Mm -hmm. and, and that was the whole motivation. It was, I hadn't even thought about all this other stuff. Probably why I still don't have a website. Because you know? <laughs> after all of this time, I just kind of like, uh, okay, I know I got to do it. But mm -hmm. the main focus is we're trying to get as many youngsters through here as possible mm -hmm. to know something about their history. So if they know about the history, they'll know something about their potential. Exactly. And knowing about their potential means that they won't spend all of their waking hours figuring how to get out of Africa. Right, because that is a you problem, see. you know, here. It's like young, young people, you know, and people in general here, but especially young people figure out, oh, you know, I can make it better if I leave. Yeah. And that's not necessarily true. Well, you know, it, Making it better is, is, a, is it's all relative. I mean, look, if you're talking about going to the U.S., working hard for 20 years, like a lot mm -hmm. of people who go for five end up there 20, 25, yeah. and 30. If you're talking about going there and working like real hard and like a slave with the education and everything, coming back here at 55, 60 years old and building a big house, right. I mean, if that's really what floats your boat, okay, well, I guess that's, you know. Right. But I mean, what is that? You know, exactly. because by the time they get through it, 20 or 30 years of that, mm -hmm. they've missed everything. And, and right. it's in real life for them. Their families, their funerals, their weddings, their friends, everything. So to, to alienate yourself from mm -hmm. your own culture and your own life and your own people just to go to try to collect some money over it, a exactly. few decades to come back to show it off is a complete, to me, a waste of life. It is, you know, and it you almost know? kind of like defines success, you know, because success has different facets right. to it. You know, and that's really looking at the big picture right. and the totality of it. You it's, know, and that's and that's what yeah, because me. because it's a, it's a material success that right. they're chasing, and at the end of the day, um, they've lost their life in pursuit of it. Exactly. You see, and then mm -hmm. and the truth is, that even this material success that you're talking about, what does that really mean? That really means right. the hyper accumulation of trinkets made by people of other races. See, you understand? That's deep. <laughs> Which just doesn't do anything mm -hmm. but drop you further and further behind, exactly. lower and lower in, in the relative scheme and of like things. And like I said, so, I'm putting it in other people's pockets. Yeah, oh yeah, and they're building their nations on your Ex back. Exactly, you instead know? of building your own nation. Exactly. And you know, when, I think it's a really lovely thing that you have children and field trips here. And that's leading me to another question, like, you know, what when kids and, and Ghanaian people um, in general see this, how do they, how do they react? How do they take it? How do they soak in Well, that's a good, that's a good point. You know, mm -hmm. it's, um, for some of them, it is a complete alien experience. Uh -huh. I mean, if you tell them, you know, uh, Imhotep of ancient Kemet, which mm -hmm. is ancient Egypt, mm -hmm. by the way, uh, was the world's first medical mm -hmm. doctor. And they don't really believe it but sometimes they check it or the children mm -hmm. do believe it because you know right. they believe what their teacher mm -hmm. brought them to learn it's a, it's a something for them they say okay so if we were the first medical doctor in the world mm -hmm. doctors in the world then why is it that we're now begging for you know uh, medical attention or aid out right. of all what's something's wrong with this picture exactly and if you're seven years old and you're nine years old mm. and you're four years old and you understand then you start asking well you know right I, it kind of causes them to think yeah, yeah. You say, well, uh -huh. now they may not put it all together mm. yet but you're really planting the seeds and that's if important. you show them how uh, amenarenus beat the roman army mm. you know they're in ancient nubia with the kandakis and these uh, mm -hmm. women uh, leading these powerful armies to maintain their sovereignty, then you start saying, so, okay, 
a black woman and the queens, the succession mm. of queens, were able to maintain that African sovereignty against what we were told was the greatest army in the world, the Roman yes. army. We must, we must have Possess something. Possess something. We exactly. have something. And so, and so we just go down the wall. And so, and like you uh, said, planting those seeds, planting yeah, those seeds is an important thing. You know, and yeah. like I said, as they grow, the seeds will be watered. They have time to think about yeah, it, and that's the most important thing. With, um, with this wonderful wall that you have built, with, because I can tell you're a historian, you're an educator, and, um, you know, bringing a lot of Ghanaian youth, young people here, you know, some people here in Ghana would be like, you know, what, what significance does this hold for me? Why do or my children, my future um, generations, why do we need to learn this so kind of what would you what would you say to um ghanaian people who have that mentality <clears throat> well it's not just ghanaian people mm -hmm. but we're here in ghana so we're yeah talking we're here about in ghana, ghana right <laughs> um well i think i have to answer that question with the question why is it so important that the european uh, in his curriculum and in his movies and in his documentaries, why is it so important for him to make sure that your children mm -hmm. have his story? There's a reason for it exactly. because they know that is what they, maintains their power over you. Mm -hmm. So the answer really is uh, a question. They're doing it so for what? a reason. Yeah. So it's probably the same reason you need to think about. Mm -hmm. And so if you're a Ghanaian here, yeah, it's a, it, coming here is not going to feed your family. It's not going to make you rich. Mm -hmm. One thing it can do, though, it can begin to put in place the foundation for future, which has it's not just political power, it's economic power, economic justice, and also the good life for your people once they know who they are and what they can do. Exactly. So it is the good life, but it's a good life. It takes time. You have to build a foundation to make sure I mean, you have you the know, things you need. Because, I mean, you know, they're children. So it's mm -hmm. like, you know, even when you're saying, like, in movies and everything with, with European um, narratives. Everything starts on a subconscious level. So when you have children come here, subconsciously what that tells them is that shaking that inferiority complex or, you know, my people haven't done anything. Right. You know, the, the, the West and the white people have done everything. Mm -hmm. So that breaks it down and that actually is a good thing mm -hmm. and that will build, you know, future generations. You not only think about yourself, but you think about others um, after you. And as a minimum, I'll mm -hmm. say this, once a child is confident about himself mm -hmm. and his capabilities, even on a, on a micro level, right. he is going to do better in school. Exactly. He's going to do better in college. He's going to see entrepreneurial uh, avenues where before he thought he should be dependent on other people. Mm -hmm. So it's also building a kind of an independent spirit right, like among your children. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, you know, so they know. So that's important. It's that's important, important that, you know, we need to kill yeah. this narrative yeah. and what you're doing. Yeah, so there's near-term and far-term benefits. Exactly. Sure. You know, teaching them history all over the continent. So that's, that's really, really important. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, Jerry, I just, I admire you so much for your, mm -hmm. for your work. Yeah. Yeah. and what you are doing. I think it's awesome and, and it's amazing. And okay. I thank you so much for being on my channel and sharing thank this you. wealth of information. Thank you. And thank you guys for tuning in. Hope you guys found this brother really informative. If you guys are here in Tema and Pram Pram, please come here, visit the Ancestral Wall, <laughs> visit him. He also has a restaurant too, am I correct? All right, Malebna's Restaurant. That's M-M-A-L-E-B-N-A, mm. -E apostrophe -E S which is a fra fra name, which means mother has come back. Uh -huh. It's also my daughter's name. Oh. And uh, we have a guest house with some, hopefully you get a few snaps of that, with some very comfortable accommodations. Wow, and, uh, so you're a jack of all trades. Huh? So we're trying to, <laughs> trying to keep it moving. Yeah. That's right, that's right, yeah. keeping it moving. Keeping so it thank moving. you guys so much for tuning in. Do not forget to like, comment, subscribe, and please share this information with others. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye. Thank you.